Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I'm going to be going over the Tormented Seasonal Fix for 9.1 and how it works. So this was just released on the PTR for testing, and I did get to watch uh, a lot of the testing for this. That has been done, the early testing I guess you would say. And uh, we'll use this Wildhide article for reference, but yeah, this it, it seems pretty cool, frankly. So uh, hopefully we're not getting too ahead of ourselves because this is... Um, new stuff after not having anything new in a long time. So I think people are going to maybe overhype it a little bit, but it definitely has potential to be pretty cool. So uh, basically there's four bosses, uh, mini bosses, think of them as, uh, in each dungeon. And uh, they, they have a negative effect that buffs the final boss. But if you kill them, it takes the buff off of the final boss and instead gives you an anima power that makes you stronger. So... Um, you know, you, you're taking t time to kill these mini bosses that don't give count as of now at least. Uh, and killing them will make you stronger and make the final boss weaker uh, by doing so. So that's kind of how it works. They, they talked a lot about kiss curse effects and this, you know, definitely qualifies for that. And there is some potential for this to be very good. And we'll see how it actually is implemented. So let's kind of go over... The, the stuff here, here they have a picture of Mr. Turner Scythe, um, and then there's four lieutenants. Now, sometimes they, these bosses can be a little bit out of the way and not uh, directly in your normal routing path. So there might be a, you know, a want to skip them. But these auras on the final bosses are no joke. So as of now, uh, the aura that it puts on the final boss, so each one of these is putting one aura on the boss. There's four lieutenants. 50% movement speed reduction. A damage over time effect, it's like fire damage, and it is no joke. A 50% reduced healing aura, and a 50% increased physical damage taken aura. Now these are, it's it's important to note these are auras, so these are just affecting the, everybody in your group, right? That's near the boss. So it's not the actual boss that's doing uh, 15, or, or that's uh, making, that's doing 50% increased physical damage to you. Uh, any trash that you pulled into it as well would be doing that as well. You know, it's it's an aura that's applied to you. So these are very, very big auras. Uh, as it says here, they do not give count. They have true sight, so you can't just uh, invis pot by them necessarily. Uh, and they do not reset health on wipe. So that is good. If you do wipe to them, um, their health does not reset, similar to a pride. Uh, what's different about a pride is... Um, First of all, they're really hard to avoid. And then you do get a buff with the pride, but it's not always useful for whatever you're about to do. Um, so routing was you know, tied very closely to trying to do a pride right before a boss, for example. Uh, whereas with this routing, you just get to keep this buff throughout the entire dungeon. So honestly, if you could somehow do all four lieutenants first, you could probably blow through the dungeon uh, pretty quickly. But they do have a lot of help. They are mini bosses, and that's important to note as well. Uh, as far as, because Mystic Plus are still timed, you know, uh, it could be a bit rough there. So they go through here, the different lieutenants. So you have Incinerator, Arcolath. Uh, this is the one that does the fire debuff. Um, what that is applied to the final boss. And then he has his own, like, couple little abilities. This, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing major. They're not too hard to kill, honestly. They have a decent amount of health and you don't want to stand in the mechanic. It does hurt uh, quite bad <laughs> to, to get hit by something. Um, this one, Cold Heart, uh, this one's actually kind of in interesting because um, it might be Biting Cold, player with Biting Cold. Like, yeah, so Biting Cold is like a circle debuff. on the, In this picture, it looks like it's on the tank or something, uh, bear. And uh, this does actually quite a bit of damage. Uh, and this is the one that also does the 50% reduced movement speed, which is almost bad for nearly every boss um, at the final. So... Uh, not every boss, but nearly every boss. Then we have Sagan on the Breaker and Execution of Rareth. They don't have images of them, but uh, Sargon the Breaker, Sagadon, he does the 50% increased physical damage, and Vareth does the 50% less healing one. So when you defeat these guys, you'll get an anima thing, like think of Torghast, and you'll click on that, and you'll have these choices. Now, these are not RNG. There's like... There's choices that anyone can get. There's DPS choices, there's tank choices, and there's healer choices, right? So those are the options. And you just choose the one that you that you like the best. We'll go through some of the powers 
down here. Uh, they list them all. So we'll go through these powers real quick. Uh, so there's a fixed animated po <laughs> related power. So they try to make it similar to a fixes. So necrotic wounding, uh, damaging a target has a high chance to consume the target with creepy decay, uh, dealing damage to them. There's the, you know, equation and reducing healing and absorption they receive by 2%. So basically you app apply necrotic to your enemy, which is, you know, pretty cool. Signet of bolstering. This is an interesting one, depending on how you handle it. Enemies that, that uh, die within 40 yards bolster you increasing damage by four percent second to five times so you can get up to 20 percent um, damage increase successive stacks do not increase the duration though so you 20 seconds so you, essentially you would want to kill five mobs at the same exact time and get 20 percent. so you'd either want to pull a group of five right next to a boss to where you could chain pull right after it or pull it on top of the boss and kill it and you would get Everybody, everybody who, let's say your entire group had bolstering or all your DPS had bolstering, you would then have 20% uh, uh, increased damage for 20 seconds, pop all your cooldowns, and to do insane damage with that. So this is actually a pretty cool one, but you do have to time it out right because, again, it does not refresh. Like, you can't just keep refreshing it. It only lasts 20 seconds. Uh, Battle of Sanguine Icker. Your healing spells and abilities have a chance to heal... Uh, Allies for six and inflict five. Obviously, these numbers are not scaled correctly. Five shadow damage up to five enemies within 12 yards. So basically, your healing um, spells uh, do extra healing to your allies, but also damage the enemies. Like It's almost like healing them with a sanguine pool. Um, volcanic plumage. Damaging a target has a chance to create a ghost uh, gout of flame beneath the target. It erupts after 2.5 seconds, stealing fire damage to all enemies within three yards and knocking them upward. So that's pretty cool as well. The knock might not be as good. Um, I know some people were worried about that. Uh, procs per minute change from none to four. So four procs per minute on that's actually pretty good. So that's like really good AOE damage. Raging Battle Axe, your damaging spells and abilities against enemies below 30% health cause them to suffer 2% um, from you until it canceled sacking up to 10 times. So I don't even know. Your damage cause them to suffer 2% more damage from you. It doesn't have like a real correct tooltip there uh so that one uh <laughs> you know not sure about that one broken mirror mag this is a tank one magic damage taken reduced by 15 percent. so these ones i'm going to read i'm not sure if these are just general ones that anybody can get um but these uh this is general right here but um some of these are tank only healing only whatever and you might be like well that's too powerful for a dps or something it might not be for a dps uh, so don't worry about that Champion's brand, while above 70% health, your haste or crit is increased by 8%. Your highest stat is always chosen, so either haste or crit. Uh, crumbling Bulwark, your versatility is increased by 3%. Upon entering combat, your damage taken is reduced by 40% for 3 seconds. So this is a really cool tank one. Uh, Dripping Fang, gain 25% leech while your health is below 25%. I'd imagine that could be for anybody. Ethereal Key, you take 5% less damage from area of effect attacks. That's pretty cool and useful. Um, kind of like Avoidance. Gavel of Judgment, your auto attacks call the Gavel of Judgment upon your target, stunning them for 4 seconds. This effect can occur once every 30 seconds. So you just have like a random stun that goes out every 30 seconds. Uh, Huntsman Muzzle, when you attack a new creature, they are silenced for 3 seconds. That's actually extremely helpful. Uh, overflowing chalice your healing spells have a chance to generate loose mana which can be collected to restore 10 percent of your maximum mana that's again very useful while you're above 90 percent health your healing done is increased by 15 percent uh, upon death grant all allies 99 percent reduced damage taken for five seconds that's kind of cool pendant of the martyr uh portable feeding trough you eat food faster much faster <laughs> that, again can be useful roots of shelter cell restore six percent of your maximum health um, I'm, I'm not going to go through all these cause I'm just reading at this point, but, uh, these are actually really cool and you might think they're really cool and don't worry, you don't get like all of these. So, you know, but you do get, if you kill all four lieutenants, you get four powers, right? So everybody in your group gets four powers and that is what leads me to think that, uh, this could be a really cool thing. So let's kind of look at this. So there's, there's multiple ways to look at this. So when you're doing, a, let's say it's just a plus 15 right uh in you know so a bit casual but you are still trying to get like the max gear and stuff uh you're doing plus 15s the way that this could be really good is especially with the new ksm that they put out 
is basically if the timers match out to where on a plus 15, if you kill all the lieutenants and are fairly clean in your run, so you're not like just dying every five seconds, then you're probably going to time your key. Now that would be a cool because basically it's saying, hey, if you kill these lieutenants, you get these anima powers, you're now powerful enough to power through the rest of the dungeon and you'll probably time the key. That could be really cool. On higher level keys though, it's going to be interesting because uh, they're really trying to skip stuff a lot. Uh, I think maybe some of the affixes will just be worth taking either way. But um, I was looking at these and thinking, which ones could you kind of skip over? So the 50% movement speed reduction on the final boss. So that's not any extra damage or healing, but 50% movement speed reduction would be really bad for certain bosses, right? Bosses that you have to move out of things uh, with less movement is going to be quite hard. Now, if you have a group that is extremely mobile, that does change things a little bit. So like, let's say you have a mage, just because that's a very common thing. Uh, let, let's focus more on the DPS classes, but uh, let's say you have a mage, um, a demon hunter and a monk so a bit melee heavy than most groups are but let's say you have those three things um and then you know a, a, a somewhat mobile tank or just a very sturdy tank uh you could get away with not doing the movement speed uh, reduction in that case because they have such instant uh mobility in those cases but i was also thinking like a boss like the final boss of spires of ascension uh, with the orbs that you have to gather, that's pretty much the only high movement you have. And you already are using whoever has the highest movement is kind of getting all the orbs as it is. So uh, you would still use those same things. So like a demon hunter would still just dash to the side to grab one and then dash back in. And then, you know, the slower people would still just be grabbing the closer ones. Now that could cause issues still for sure because you're not used to being 50% slower um, on this phase. And you might, maybe you're getting hit by more of the puddles on the floor or something. Uh but yeah, I was thinking like that boss is one where you already are using like um, special movement abilities as much as you can to do the uh, orbs. So the 50% movement speed might not affect you as much. And then there's other bosses where you can think how terrible it would affect you. Um, maybe like the statues being thrown at you at the end of halls even uh, with 50% movement speed reduction. Maybe that causes a lot more people to get hit by the statues. That could be a huge issue. So there's a... There's like a pro one and a, neg a con one there for the movement speed. The damage over time effect is rough. So this would have to be, if you kept this one up, and it, it hits pretty hard based on the testing I was watching. Um, this this one is like, you would it would have to be a final boss of a dungeon that basically there isn't much healing to do and the healer is just pumping the whole time anyways. Uh, and... You know, Holy Pound would actually be pretty good here, ironically enough, because the Ashen Hollow um, maybe could keep up a little bit with the healing. The, this is a lot of damage, though. So this one I do see getting taken off quite a bit. Um, again, unless unless there's a specific boss where there's just not that much damage going on. Um, or you're pushing things fast enough to avoid it. So, like, I guess, like, Stradama and Plaguefall, if you have a group that can push before the rain starts, right, um then the damage over time might not be as bad. Uh, but if you're taking, but I imagine that damage is going on even when she's underground. And if so, then that's then that's pretty much off the table. So that could be quite rough. And then this 50% reduced healing kind of has, has the same qualifiers, right? You need to have not be taking a ton of damage already uh, for you to for you to be able to survive the 50% reduced healing. Otherwise, you know, not only is your healer going to go oom. Um, but it's just, it's going to be like, if there's a mechanic where you're getting taken down to 25% health just because you get the mechanic or 20% health, um, and then there's 50% reduced healing, that's going to be quite rough and that's going to stack up really quickly and put the healer really behind. So that, that's a rough one as well. The 50% increased damage taken, now that, that one's more interesting because there are some bosses that do do like very heavy magical damage uh, at, in the game. So this one could possibly be uh, avoided a little bit there, the 50% uh, increased physical damage taken. 
uh, I could see that one being skipped for specific dungeons, right? Now, obviously, not for ones where you take a lot of physical damage, because that would be absolutely uh, punishing. I was kind of thinking of Muzala. He does have a, like, tank breaker attack uh, so that is physical damage, and 50% increased physical damage from that could be rough. You would make have to make sure you have, like, a cooldown up for every... every the tank would have to have a cooldown up for everything uh, that came with that, for every, uh, like, tank buster ability that came uh, from Muzala. But other than that, he does pretty much all magical damage other than that one attack. So everyone else would be pretty much fine. So that would be an instance of maybe skipping that one the, the 50 for the 50% increased physical damage. Um, whereas the speed, you might want the speed for that one to dodge out of the way. Again, it depends on how mobile your group is. So there's some interesting things to play around here with these. I do, I do see the, the reduced healing and the damage over time effect are kind of the same thing, um, a little bit redundant, and they're also the ones that I think you would skip the least um, out of the four, just just off the top of my head. And I think I, maybe I'm thinking more in the plus 15 level, maybe the people in like the pushing the really high keys think differently than that, which is possible, but, but that's kind of where I'm, my head's at on that. So overall, this could be really cool. Uh, it could be a thing, like I said, that allows, hey, you do these lieutenants, you play clean. These lieutenants are giving you the buff. So, you so you know, a random player doing a plus 15, they probably know their rotation and know stuff a lot, but they might not be perfect at it. And these extra buffs, so what these buffs could be saying is, hey, you play clean, you get these buffs, and you'll complete the dungeon on time. Uh, and at higher keys, maybe there's more nuance than that. But hopefully they balance it around plus 15s because that's kind of where the KSM is, obviously. Uh, the score system uh, is kind of taken around 15s. So hopefully they balance these around 15s and it allows people to get them done if they do it. And this could be a really cool thing then because people have these affixes, they'll feel powerful. People love to feel powerful, right, in, in an MMORPG. And you go through the dungeon, complete it finish it and say, hey, man, I wouldn't have finished it without that affix. And then all of a sudden people really like the affix and uh, are very pro uh, in favor of it. So uh, definitely optimistic about this. Kiss Curse are always good. Prideful was a Kiss Curse as well, but it was a little bit more like, hey, you have to do these prides. And uh, they scale up to do uh, incredibly high damage uh, in <laughs> hierarchies. And you might just want to skip them. <laughs> and whereas these, they're first of all going to be harder. To, uh, in some ways, I think I think that will be the pushback. Is if since these these might not be skippable just because the aura on the final boss might be too strong, and so they have the the potential to be as oppressive as a prideful in that way. Uh, unless again, like I said, the 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 kiss part. So kiss curse. So that's the curse. If the kiss part is scaled in a way that makes it feel worth it every single time then that is actually a good thing so not that not that i think that they should have to kill them all every single time but maybe maybe getting three of the three kisses uh, allows you to have the one curse and then you're fine with it right so that that could be it as well like balancing those out so we'll see where it goes from here hopefully we're probably about a month away from the patch or maybe less. So uh, we should get to see this on live soon and see how people like it. But I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about it. It seems like most of the Mythic Plus community is optimistic about it. And yeah, it, it's actually pretty cool. So that's it for this video. I ask you to please subscribe to the channel because it helps me out so much. And other than that, everybody have a good one.